Okay, guys, let's take a look at the formulas that we've got for this unit. There are two formulas, or two and a half, let's say. V is equal to lambda F. You can use this formula anytime you're trying to figure out the wavelength or frequency of the wave. So we know that the speed of light, uh, since we're talking about light here, uh, the speed of light is C, and it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And so we can we know that's always true. So anytime you plug this in, you know it's going to be three times ten to the eighth. Uh, you just need to know what to fill in on this other side here. So let's say that the wavelength is three meters. Well, if you need to find the frequency, well, what you would do is you would divide both sides by three, and you would get a frequency of one times ten to the eighth meters per second. So that's an eight. All right. <clears throat> or sorry. It wouldn't be meters per second, would it? It would be one over a second. And uh, that would be equal to the frequency. Uh, remember that the unit hertz is the unit for frequency. Um, and hertz is equal to one divided by a second. So this would end up being, instead of one divided by a second, it would be 10 to the eighth hertz. All right. That's a radio wave, by the way. Um, then, you know, you could obviously do this with more complicated numbers. Let's say the wavelength was three times ten to the negative fifty or fifteenth, right? Uh, you would do a similar problem, but the frequency would be way, way higher. All right, and the same thing would happen if you needed to plug in the frequency. You can plug it in over here. Essentially, what you're going to be doing, though, is you're going to be dividing by one of these and getting the answer to the other one, because this number is always three times ten to the eighth. All right, so it's a fairly simple formula. The other formula is slightly more complex, and there's a little bit more nuance to it. So this is this formula, 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. Now, uh, also, we had this formula, magnification equals negative Q over P. And I told you not to worry about the negative. That's just the way you'll see it. Um, uh, if you need to know whether it's magnif or sorry, if you need to know whether it's inverted or upright, just do the drawing of it, and you should be able to tell whether it's inverted or upright. All right. So uh, p is equal to uh, the distance of the object from the lens or mirror. Q is the distance of the image from the lens or mirror, and f is the distance of the focus from the lens or mirror. Alright, <clears throat> so a couple of extra things here. Alright, uh, for mirrors, anything, anything behind the mirror is negative. So if anything ever says it forms or is behind the mirror, it's negative. Everything else is positive, obviously, but everything behind the mirror is negative. For lenses, If it's only Q that changes, if Q is on the same side as the image, it's going to be, uh, here I'm going to rub this over here, if it's on the same side as the image, it will be negative. So if it's a lens and it's on the same side as the image, it will be negative. Far side of the lens, the lens is positive. So let me show you what I mean here. Uh, so if <clears throat> if we draw a mirror, all right, this is a concave mirror. If the image or if anything forms back here, it's negative. If anything forms up here, it's positive. Same thing for a convex mirror. Anything that forms up here is positive. Anything that forms back here is negative. Be that the focus, the object, or the image. That's all the same. All right. On the other one, okay, this doesn't matter. Just any, any lens, any lens, uh, these are mirrors. But any lens, this is true, either one. Uh, well, that's a terrible E. Uh, for either lens, it's only Q that changes. If Q is in front of the lens, 
If Q is here, it's negative. If Q is back here, it's positive. This, this is our object. So Q, remember, is the distance of the image. So if the image is on the side of the object, it's negative. If it's on the side opposite the object, it's positive. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so if we wanted to, we can we can just make up one real quick. Let's say that we have a make up one for an, a, a mirror so that we can see it. Let's say we have a concave mirror and we have an, a focus at 10 centimeters. So focus is at 10 centimeters. And then we have an object way out here at, uh, we have an object way out there at, let's say, 90 centimeters. And we want to know what the magnification is and what the distance of the object is. Or sorry, the distance of the image is. So I'm going to be able to find both of these. So I plug it into my formula, 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1 over F. All right. So, I plug this in, I get 1 divided by 90 plus 1 divided by Q equals 1 divided by 10. I end up getting 1 over Q equals, that's a Q, not a 9, let me put a little tail on it, uh, equals 1 divided by 10 minus uh, 1 divided by 90. Now notice everything here was positive because it was all on the front side of the mirror. All right. So, if I type in the calculator, 1 divided by 10 minus 1 divided by 90, I get um, a decimal number that is equal to, hang on one moment, that is equal to 0 0.0888888. So, 1 over Q is equal to 0 0.0888888 and keeps going on and on and on. But that's not my answer because it's got 1 over Q. So I've got to invert it. So I'm going to hit X to the negative 1, answer X to the negative 1, and you get 11.25. So that means Q is at 11.25. All right. So we know that the distance of the, the, distance of the image is 11.25. Now for the magnification, we know that it's equal to uh, the Q over P. Right, negative Q over P. So we're going to plug that in, negative 11.25 over uh, P, which was 90. And uh, <clears throat> if we do that, we get uh, 0.125. So the magnification is equal to 0.125 times its original size. That's an X. All right, 0.125 times. 0.125 times its original size. All right, <clears throat> and so that's how you would solve it. No, notice Q would form on the front side of the mirror, like right here, because it was positive. All right, that's because it was it came out a positive number. Had it come out negative, it would have formed somewhere back here. All right, if it was negative. Of course, it wasn't. So we'll erase that. All right. The next type is if we had a lens. Okay, so let's just take a look at a lens and see what happens. Let's just make it a uh, concave lens and we'll say the focus on this guy is at uh, 5 centimeters and we are going to form an image at uh, let's make it negative 10 centimeters and we want to know where uh, sorry, that I doesn't need to be there. Uh, we want to know where the P is, where P is. So we have the focus here, and we have the image formed here. So the image is somewhere here. I don't know whether it's really upright or not. I'm just drawing it as an example. And the focus is right here. I want to know where P is. Well, what I've got to do is this. I've got... Uh, Remember that since it's on the lens, if it forms on the side, the left side of the mirror, the side of, the, sorry, not the mirror, if it's on the lens and it forms on the side of the lens with the object, which the object is somewhere here, we just don't know where, somewhere along in here, we just don't know where yet. Uh, if it forms on the same side, we have to make it negative. So that's the reason Q is negative there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in, 1 over P, 
plus 1 over q, 1 over negative 10, equals 1 over 5. So if I do this, I should get 1 over p equals uh, 1 fifth plus 1 tenth, and I would get, uh, that would be equal to 2 tenths plus uh, 1 tenth, and 1 divided by p would be equal to 3 tenths. All right, so let's take a look and see what that would give us. 3 tenths would give us 0.3, and then if I invert that, I would get P is equal to 3.333 centimeters. So that's where P would be. So that means P would form inside the focus. Now take a moment and look at your notes, and then figure out whether or not the image should be bigger or smaller. All right. You should notice that the image should be larger because this is what happens when you put the magnifying glass up close to the paper. So our image is actually going to be quite a bit bigger. But we can figure out exactly how much bigger because since the magnification is equal to negative Q over P, um, it's equal to uh, negative negative 10 over 3.33333. And the magnification would be equal to three times. Three times. So it should be three times bigger. The image should be three times bigger. All right, so hopefully that helps you figure out how to use that formula, and uh, you can more successfully use that in the future.